In a groundbreaking move, the U.S. Navy has made its stance clear. It's set to implement Microsoft's Xbox 360 pad across its fleet of Virginia-class, cutting-edge, $2.7 billion attack submarines, while showcasing the versatility and adaptability of Xbox controllers in a high-stakes environment. This innovative decision brings a familiar and user-friendly interface to control the advanced technology on board, allowing for more precise and efficient operations. However, with the integration of gaming technology into military equipment, how will the Navy streamline its processes and enhance the capabilities of its submarine fleet? Are a keyboard and mouse the way to go in modern warfare? Join us as we unveil the U.S. Navy subs equipped with Xbox controllers. Did you know that the U.S. Navy is now using Xbox controllers on their $2.7 billion attack submarine? That's right, these controllers are being used to maneuver the photonic mast on the USS Colorado, and they have been since 2018, with the USS Colorado being the first. The submarines now come equipped with a pair of photonic masts, which replaced the previously used periscope. The masts feature high-resolution cameras that can rotate 360 degrees and feeds their imagery to monitors in the ship's control room. Initially, the masts were controlled with a helicopter-style stick, but those were described as heavy and clunky and were swapped out with an Xbox 360 controller. According to officials, using off-the-shelf technology saves the Navy money, while the controller is already intuitive for the submarine sailors. The Navy found that the Xbox controllers were much easier to use, as the younger crew members are very familiar with the technology. They are also significantly cheaper than the traditional joysticks. This change is just one example of how the military is modernizing its technology to improve efficiency and effectiveness. Since 2009, the military has taken cues from the video game industry, with controllers that closely resemble the ones that control consoles. Officials have stated, we already have this generation that's already trained up in their use. So why would we try to use different systems that we'd have to train them how to utilize? It's amazing to see how everyday technology like video game controllers can be adapted for use in such a high-stakes environment. Now, let's dive into the cutting-edge attack submarines. The U.S. Navy ships are nuclear-powered, fast attack submarines designed for various missions. These fast attack submarines are multi-mission platforms, enabling five of the six core capabilities of the Navy maritime strategy. Sea control, power projection, forward presence, maritime security, and deterrence. They are designed to excel in anti-suit warfare, strike warfare, special operations, intelligence, surveillance and reconnaissance, irregular warfare, and mine warfare. Fast attack submarines project power ashore with special operation forces and Tomahawk cruise missiles to prevent or respond to regional crises. Attack submarines are designed to seek and destroy enemy submarines and surface ships, project power ashore with Tomahawk cruise missiles and Special Operation Forces, SOF, carry out intelligence, surveillance and reconnaissance, ISR, mission support battle group operations and engage in mine warfare. With the number of foreign diesel-electric or air-independent propulsion submarines increasing, the United States Submarine Force relies on its technological superiority and the speed, endurance, mobility, stealth, and payload afforded by nuclear power to retain its preeminence in the undersea battle space. The USS Ship Classifications The Navy has three classes of SSNs in service. Los Angeles class SSN 688 submarines are the backbone of the submarine force, with approximately 40 now in commission. 30 have 12 vertical launch system VLS tubes for firing Tomahawk cruise missiles. The Navy also has three Seawolf class submarines commissioned on July 19, 1997. USS Seawolf class SSN 21 submarines are exceptionally quiet, fast, well-armed and equipped with advanced sensors. Though lacking VLS, the Seawolf class has eight torpedo tubes and can hold up to 50 weapons in its torpedo room. The third ship of the class, USS Jimmy Carter, SSN-23, 
has a 100-foot hull extension called the Multi-Mission Platform. This hull section provides additional payloads to accommodate advanced technology for conducting classified research and development and enhanced warfighting capabilities. The Navy continues to build the next-generation attack submarine, the Virginia SSN-774 class. 21 Virginias have been commissioned to date, and they will replace Los Angeles-class submarines as they retire. The Virginia class has several innovations that have significantly enhanced its warfighting capabilities, including in littoral or coastal operations. The class has special features to support SOF, including a reconfigurable torpedo room that can accommodate many SOF personnel and all of their equipment for prolonged deployments and future off-board payloads. The class also has a large lockout truck, LOT, for divers. In Virginia class SSNs, traditional periscopes have been supplanted by two photonic masts that host visible and infrared digital cameras atop telescoping arms. With removing the barrel telescopes, the ship's control room has been moved down one deck and away from the hull's curvature, affording it more room and an improved layout that provides the commanding officer with enhanced situational awareness. Additionally, through the extensive use of modular construction, open architecture, and commercial off-the-shelf components, the Virginia class is designed to remain state of the practice for its entire operational life by rapidly introducing new system ships payloads. Now let's dig into the redesigns of the Virginia class. L3 Keo is a significant operating division within L3's Integrated Sensor Systems ISS sector. This division specializes in designing and constructing advanced sensor systems for submarines, surface ships, combat vehicles, and other defense applications. One of their notable contributions is the development of the Low Profile Photonics Mast, LPPM, for U.S. Navy Virginia-class attack submarines. The LPPM serves as a modern alternative to the traditional submarine periscope. Unlike the periscope, which penetrates the submarine hull, the photonics mast remains non-hull penetrating. Instead, it connects to the submarine via optical fiber. L3 Communications announced recently that its electro-optics business, L3 Keo, was awarded a $48.7 million competitively bid contract from the Naval Sea Systems Command, NAVC, to develop and build a new, slimmer version of its photonics mast for the L3's 4 low-profile photonics mast LPPM program for use on Virginia-class submarines. Under the terms of the contract, L3 Keo will perform engineering and design work for the lower profile mast during the first year with options to produce up to 29 photonics masts over a subsequent four-year period, as well as engineering services and provisioning item orders with a contract minimum ceiling value of $157 million. L3 Keo is well known for developing and manufacturing specialized equipment including submarine photonics and periscopes, ship fire control systems, visual landing aids, and ground electro-optical and sensor queuing systems. Headquartered in Northampton, Massachusetts, L3 Keo operates U.S. facilities in Vermont, Connecticut, and New Jersey, as well as in Bologna and Milan, Italy. L3 Keo's products are used by the U.S. military, prime contractors, and international nations. Let's discuss the notable changes in the new Virginia-class subs, shall we? Despite its valued service for over 80 years, the U.S. Navy will soon say goodbye to the conventional periscope. Construction has already begun on a new breed of attack submarines that won't even have a periscope. Instead, these new Virginia-class submarines will use non-penetrating imaging devices called photonic masts to perform surveillance tasks. Each new submarine will be equipped with two photonic masts, which are basically arrays of high-resolution cameras that capture and send visual images to flat panel displays in the control room. As part of the Virginia class's third, or Block 3, contract, the Navy redesigned approximately 20% of ships to reduce their acquisition costs. Most of the changes are found in the bow, where the traditional air-backed sonar sphere has been replaced with a water-backed Large Aperture Bow, or LAB array, which reduces acquisition and life cycle costs while providing enhanced passive detection capabilities. 
The new bow also replaces the 12 individual vertical launch system. Virginia Class's two large diameter 87-inch Virginia payload tubes, VPTs, each capable of launching six Tomahawk cruise missiles using multiple all-up round canisters, MAX, already employed on SSGNs. Due to their added volume, the VPTs simplify construction, reduce acquisition costs, and provide more payload flexibility than the similar VLS tubes. The Block 3 design changes will continue on all future Virginias and were successfully proven during USS North Dakota's SSN 784 Builder Sea Trials in August 2014. Block 3 hulls include the eight ships procured from 2008 through 2013, SSNs 784 through 791. The next major change is the incorporation of the Virginia Payload Module, VPM, starting with the second Block 5 ship, SSN 803, currently under construction. VPM incorporates four additional large diameter payload tubes in a new hull section located amidships. Due to their location, each VPM payload tube can carry Dakota's Tomahawk cruise missiles, adding 28 missiles per VPM. The VPM reconstitutes the ability to host dry deck shelters, further enhancing SOF capability and allowing the Navy to host additional advanced payloads via multiple ocean interfaces. Block 5 hulls include the 10 ships procured from 2019 through 2023, SSNs 802 through 811. Additional future blocks, Block 6 and 7, will leverage Block 5 modifications and future changes. In addition, newer submarines are equipped with two types of periscopes, one on the right side, a starboard, and one on the left, a port. For example, the USS Springfield has a Type 2 attack scope on the starboard side and a Type 18 search scope on the port side. The Type 18 scope is limited to operations in the daylight. It takes photographs with a 70 millimeter digital camera and then displays those images on a television monitor. Some periscopes also have night vision, a still camera, and a video camera, which can magnify viewing images. Conventional optical periscopes have two problems. First, a periscope well runs the entire height of the ship to house the periscope, and its size restricts the arrangement of the sail and interior compartments. Second, periscopes can accommodate only one person at a time. The Navy has developed a new AN-BVS-1 photonics mast to solve these two problems. The Virginia-class attack submarine was the first submarine equipped with photonic masts. So how will the photonics masts work? A periscope's basic purpose is to allow submarine crews to see objects above the water while the ship remains submerged. A simple periscope can be constructed out of a vertical tube with mirrors placed at 45 degree angles at the top and bottom of the tube. These devices redirect light from the mirror at the top of the periscope to the mirror at the bottom. Of course, modern submarine telescopes have more scopes than that. In a submarine periscope, prisms are used in place of mirrors at the top and bottom of the periscope tube, aligned parallel to each other. The top prism collects light from an image and bounces that light through a series of lenses and two telescopes that run the length of the periscope tube down to a second prism. This prism at the base of the tube reflects the light into a secondary tube, which consists of two lenses, and then through the eyepiece. Also, submarine periscopes may be as long as 60 feet or 18 meters. When a submarine is submerged to a depth equal to the length of the periscope tube, it is considered to be at periscope depth. Because of the length of these periscopes, having two mirrors attached inside the ends of the periscope is not a sufficient method for carrying an image from the top window to the eyepiece. Periscopes are contained inside a periscope well within the ship's sail. On submarines, sail is often used to describe the conning tower. This tower is the cylindrical chamber attached to the top of the submarine. It is traditionally located directly above the control room. The well runs from the sail's top to the ship's bottom. A periscope can rotate to give the operator a 360-degree view of the ocean surface. If an object or enemy ship needs to be avoided, the submarine will dive. Furthermore, the photonics mast provides a conventional optical periscope's imaging, navigation, electronic warfare, and communications functions. 
Each Virginia-class submarine will have two photonics masts, which do not penetrate or retract into the ship's hull. The masts will rise like a car antenna in a telescopic motion. Electronic imaging equipment will replace the prisms and lenses of the old optical periscopes. The system's heart is the sensor unit that will protrude through the water. This multiple electro-optical sensor is located in a rotating head. The masts are equipped with three cameras, including a color camera, a high-resolution black and white camera, and an infrared camera. To provide images of the submarine, there is also a mission-critical control camera in a separate, pressure-proof and shock-hardened housing, and an eye-safe laser rangefinder that provides accurate target ranges and aids in navigation. The periscope well that houses these masts will be contained only in the ship's sail. The smaller size of the periscope well allows for more freedom in determining the location of the ship's control room. With conventional periscopes, the control room had to be placed in the cramped upper deck. In the new Virginia-class submarine, the control room will have a more open layout on the more expansive second deck. Images from the photonics masts are sent via fiber optics to two workstations and a commander's control console. The ship's photonics masts can be controlled via a joystick with Xbox controllers coming soon from any of these stations. Each station contains two flat panels, a standard keyboard, and a trackball interface. Images are recorded on video cassette and CD-ROM. The photonics mast is the latest tool to be added to the United States' electronic warfare arsenal. This new technology will make the Virginia-class submarines the most advanced and automated submarines in the command. The Xbox controller will enhance the Navy's capabilities. The Navy has already been testing Microsoft's Xbox 360 pad in this context for six years to make sure it is up to the job. It's expected to be fully implemented in the USS Colorado for the first time. It should be commissioned by November before being rolled out across other Virginia-class submarines as part of the service's modern action effort. Initially, the periscopes used on Virginia-class submarines comprise of two photonic masts, each of which can rotate 360 degrees. They are outfitted with high-resolution cameras that output their images to large displays so that everyone in the room can see what's being observed. However, the method of controlling where they are looking using a joystick wasn't particularly popular among operators. Senior officers and sailors described the previously used joystick as clunky and really heavy. As a result, officials began to test whether the Xbox 360 controller could replace the equipment. The Navy found that the Xbox controllers were easier to use, more familiar to the younger crew members, and significantly cheaper than the previously used joysticks. This change is just one example of how the military is modernizing its technology to improve efficiency and effectiveness. Wow, it's amazing how everyday technology like video game controllers can be adapted to high-stakes environments. What do you think about this innovative use of Xbox controllers in the Navy? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching the video. And be sure to subscribe to our channel for more updates on the latest tech trends in the military around the world.